few Americans have won. In the mid-50s, Cincinnati's Tony Trabert won this Grand Slam event consecutively. But after Trabert, a 34-year U.S. drought until Michael Chang shocked the tennis world in 1989. Last year, 20-year-old Floridian Jim Courier was the upset winner. Czechoslovakia's success in Paris, last represented by Ivan Lendl's 1984 upset of John McEnroe, and Lendl's repeat in 86 and 87. Today, Lendl's former ball boy in Prague, Petr Korda, reaches for the French crown against Courier, a former Little League shortstop, looking to hit another tennis grand slam. Courier, number one in the world, and Korda to the winner, the treasured tennis championship of France. Bonjour, it's sunny in the 70s, shortly after 3 o'clock in the Paris afternoon, live from this great city. The finalists for the Grand Slam prize will appear shortly, taking the court, this center court, red clay of Roland Garros, with the history of the French Open Championship, one of the four major tournaments, the four Grand Slams. Only two men have ever accomplished that rare feat. Don Budge, an American, a redhead in 1938, and twice in the 60s, Rod Laver, another redhead, an American redhead who won it last year, Jim Courier, about to make his uh, appearance, and he will defend his championship against Petr Korda of Prague, Czechoslovakia. Welcome aboard, Bud Collins, John McEnroe, who was part of the 128 men who made this a championship. Didn't stay as long as you'd like, but you had a chance to play some and see a lot. Well, Dick, I appreciate you bringing that up. I wasn't around too long. I lost the first round to Nicholas Culty, but uh, I had a chance to talk with Petra Korda before the match. Uh, we, we talked for about an hour, and uh, he uh, was drinking a cup of coffee with about six or seven lumps of sugar in each one, and... Uh, he felt, despite that, was very relaxed, and uh, he feels very confident about his chances today. He realizes he has nothing to lose in this match. At the same time, he feels like he's put a lot of hard work into this. He doesn't feel like this is a fluke that he's in this position at this point. And they're about to make their appearance now. Apparently, there is glimpses of them, and here they come. Career, the champion, leads the way. He has made it to the number one status in the world, the first American since McEnroe in 1985, Petta Korda seated seventh trails behind him it's Corda's biggest day ever in tennis his first appearance in a grand slam final we're just minutes away bud collins and uh, each time we see one of these great championships you start wandering through the years well it's very curious that this is the first time in 54 years that an american could be halfway to the grand slam and i guess now there's a little lesson in tennis terminology yes this is what is called a grand slam title but this is not the grand slam you have to win australia france wimbledon and the u.s in the same year as don budge did in 1938 and as i'm convinced john patrick mcenroe would have done in 1984 if he'd won the fifth <laughs> set here against Ivan Lendl, because then you went on to wimbledon you went on to the u.s open and that year the australian was the last not the first but corda is one of those john it's funny the last Czechoslovak to win here, although she was a U.S. citizen, Martina Navratilova, left-hander, grew up in that area, didn't like clay. Korda doesn't like clay. They've really had to work hard to learn to play on it. Well, you know what's interesting is the fact that Petra Korda has never gotten past the third round in a major event. But if you look at the other side of the coin, before last year, Jim Courier never got past the fourth round of a major event either. So he's the, this isn't entirely old, uh, old for Jim Courier either. He's only been uh, the third final that he's been in. Last year was only his fourth career final at the French Open. So I feel there's going to be pressure on both players. Obviously, Jim Curry is the overwhelming favorite, but I suspect that he's going to be feeling a bit of nerves as well. Court, a great shot maker, the left-hander from Prague, were set for the 1992 championship start. Petter Korda, Prague, Jim Curry, a 21-year-old Floridian. Sports coverage of the French Open is presented by Diet Coke. For great taste and one calorie, there's just one Diet Coke. A luxury car says a lot about its owner. Mine says I'm witty beyond belief. 
Mine says I'm more Europeanish. Mine says I'm the product of superior genes. A luxury car says I'm so successful I can go into debt. I'm much more handsome. Cosmopolitan. Another pathetic sheep following the herd. Says a lot. I'm irresistible. Powerful. Highly sexy. Dynamic. The all-wheel drive Subaru Legacy. All it says is that you bought a great car and you can still pay your mortgage. Possibly be doing with his wife on a Saturday afternoon. Can I clean up the garage or scrub the toilet? Or... She's like a slave driver, that woman. Yeah. Right? I never let a woman treat me that way. So, what, what, what should we do tonight? We could talk about cars. Yeah. Behind this umbrella stands an independent agent representing the travelers, your partner in insurance protection. Open in case you want the team that delivers. You're better off under the umbrella. It's nothing serious. It only wakes me up a couple of times a week. It really doesn't affect me. I avoid foods that are fried or spicy. I can deal with it. I just take antacids. If you have frequent heartburn symptoms like acid indigestion or burning in the chest, talk to your doctor. These may be signs of a serious medical problem. Your doctor has treatment plans that can help. It's only a heartburn. I should learn to live with it. Right? Frequent heartburn. Isn't it time you talk to your doctor? Inside and out, Sears has your paint needs covered. Pick up Weatherbeater exterior or Easy Living interior flat finishes. Your choice, only $10.99 a gallon. But hurry, this terrific paint sale ends soon. I'm paid to buy the high volume copiers. I don't want to have to worry about them. The corporate line from Canon. If our copiers are working, our people are working. Reliable high volume copiers you don't have to think about. The corporate line from Canon, the new power in high volume copy. 1992 French Open is brought to you by Subaru, it's what to drive. By the people at Nike, who encourage you to just do it. By the Travelers, you're better off under the umbrella. And by Canon, the number one copier company and the new power in high volume copying. Welcome back to Center Court. This crowd, 16 to 17,000, settling in. Courier against Corda for the Grand Slam French Open Championship. Courier in the top half of the draw had a much tougher trip here, bud. He certainly did after Nicholas Kroon, the Swedish qualifier. Thomas Booster, 22 in the world, who won Monte Carlo this year. Alberto Mancini, the young bull of the Pampas. He's tough, but he got by him. 17-year-old Andre Medvedev. Remember that name. And then Goran Ivanisevic, the only one to win a set for Jim Courier, and it was tough in the fourth. Jim was down 4-1, and then Andre Agassi, and how far they have drifted apart. A five-set final last year, a very easy semi this year. Petr Korda didn't have to face a seated player to get here. Isn't that a nice way to go, Christian Bergstrom? Now Shuzo Matsuoka, six-foot-two-inch Japanese, Mihil Schappers. And Jamie Onsens, the guy who put out Ivan Lendl in the second round, he's a Brazilian. Andre Turkasov, who put out Stefan Edberg. And then Henri Leconte sending Paris into mourning. And it was Leconte who had beaten Michael Steak, the Wimbledon champion. That's what opened it up for Corda. They've met twice before, and each has won. In 1991, it was Corda in three sets, and then Courier answered in Stockholm four and four. Dimini. They've never met on Dimini. play. The opening serve of the 92 French Open Championship coming up. News alert. Someone is stealing Gotham City's power supply. Danger of citywide blackout. When you want a Diet Coke, you want a Diet Coke. After all, there's just one. <laughs> Diet Coke. Just for the taste. Hey, I'm vain. Of course I'm vain. That's why I comb my hair the way I do. I dress the way I do. That's why I stay in shape. To compete against men half your age takes a certain kind of power. That's why I play like an animal. The power of power stick. I give it everything I have every time I walk out there. 50% more wetness and odor fighters per stroke. This works best for me. I don't want people going around saying, whew, that Connors, he's tough to be around. Power stick by Fabergé. Power that won't let you down. I told you I was vain. 
The French Open is brought to you by Diet Coke, proud sponsor of the 1992 French Open. For great taste and one calorie, there's just one Diet Coke. Welcome back. Jim Courier confirming his status as the number one player in the world. He's on a winning streak that has now reached uh, 23 in a row. That is, uh, check that 22. This would be the 23rd. That's the longest in a couple of years on the men's tour. He's fresh from a clay court championship in Rome, the Italian Open. He's won eight titles, two on clay, and quarters in his eight finals. He's won but two titles both last year. What a jocular, friendly guy he is. Woodstock, Sparky Schultz's cartoon character. <laughs> That's a fitting nickname, isn't it? Best ever, as McEnroe pointed out earlier, a third round loss at uh, Wimbledon. Well, it's going to be interesting how Jim Courier approaches this at the beginning of the match. Uh, my suspicion is that he'll go out and play his normal game, but for example, when uh, Andre Agassi played quarter in the Davis Cup back in March, we chose a tactic where we would just play a more high percentage defensive style, looping type style, and we found that to be quite effective because quarter's history is more of a hit-miss type player. Bruno Ribu, a Niçoise, is the umpire. John, what about him? Very good umpire. Oh, my Very goodness. good umpire. Best umpire I've ever had. And he's saying it with a straight face. Oh, Sammy. What I like about Bruno is that he really tries to have communication with the players, unlike a lot of the other ones, and uh, that's probably why he's doing the French Open final. Players umpire. Curry, a very deliberate player. Ooh. Two big serves to open this final. If Jim, if Jim Curry can win as many free points on his serve as he normally does against lesser ranked opponents, this could be a very long day for Petter. Or a short one. For us. Oh. So three serves from Courier, three very quick points. You just get the feeling with Jim Curry of the ultimate professional at this point, and that's just such a typical example that to come right out and hit three straight first serves in and put the pressure on immediately is, is the best thing he could have done right here. He hasn't even have to hit a, hit a shot yet to this point. Just wide. And Corda long on that forehand, so an easy start for the defending champion. Dear Thompson, Honey, I ran out of midway through waterproofing our new deck. I ran out of Thompson's water seal and finished with another brand. Two days later, it rained. It was amazing. Wow. You could actually see side. the Thompson side working. The other side looked like I hadn't used a thing. Thompson's water seal has 50% more active ingredients than most brands for more waterproofing power. You can see the difference. For my money, nothing tops Thompson's. And I proved it. Sincerely, Marsha Jackalone, Bassett, Wisconsin. Clear. Test area. Tests prove Rockport dress shoes absorb shock significantly better than ordinary dress shoes. Rockport, you should be in our shoes. The energy to excel in many arenas, not just one. That's the energy we share at Texaco. Creating products like System 3 gasoline and Havilland Formula 3 motor oil. The energy to go as far as we can and then go even further. Now court a chance to serve. He's 24, lanky 6'3", 160 pounds. Asparagus thin, as one French writer described him. Scores. It's 
it's interesting because I was talking to Petter when he, before the match, and he was talking about the first time he went on the satellite circuits and how he lost 10 pounds. It's hard to believe that he could lose 10 pounds off this frame because he was only have one meal a day. That's all they could afford, the Czech Federation. Huh. 15 all. So he's eighth in the world, but seated seventh here. Becker, ahead of him on the world rankings because of injury, did not compete in this French. We hope to see him at Wimbledon in a couple of weeks. Interesting how far back Jim is, John, to receive serve. Yeah, he may be trying to employ a bit of the style that uh, we use when Andre played uh, Petter in Davis Cup. Stand back, and he sees that Petter's nervous. He's made a couple unforced errors, make him work for every point. At the same time, he wants, he wants to stick to his game plan, what he feels comfortable with. Let's just hope these two guys play with the same guts and determination the, the two ladies played yesterday in the finals. Mm. Monica Sellis surviving a tough battle to defend her title against Steffi Graf. We'll show you portions of that great third set as time permits during our telecast today from Paris. to the big forehand from Corda. This is what Corda likes to do. He's not a natural serve volley player. But when he sees a short ball, he gets all over it. That's going to loosen him, loosen him up quite a bit. If he had missed that shot, he would have been facing a break point. So that was a big point for Petter. I feel like I want to start calling him Peter. He doesn't mind. Everybody does pretty much. And he says that's fine. It's like the old Czech player Miloslav Mečer, the way we pronounce it, but it was really Miloslav Mešič. Well, actually, Mečer. <laughs> that's all right, gentlemen. Let's not argue. <laughs> It's like an old Cole, Cole Porter song. That's Slovak. That's right. We can do that, John. <laughs> Accorda answering that blistering backhand from Courier. Is Jim Courier's backhand and a great forehand down the line again by Corda. Corda said that his big turning point came back in February, February of 91 when... And his first ace, it's one all. When he got a new coach, Vladimir Zednik. He felt that really th turned things around for him. And as far as this year, after the Davis Cup that I've been referring to earlier, he went to Nick Boletari's camp in Florida for two or three weeks of intensive training. And he really feels like that helped him a lot in this clay court season. What's funny is when they made their schedule at the beginning of the year, he told Vladimir that he didn't feel like he had any chance to win on clay. Huh. And, and almost talked about not wanting him to play on what? and try to concentrate on other surfaces. Now here we are, finals of the French Open. Incredible. And semifinals of the Italian. Just long as he blocks that return near the baseline. Played doubles with him in uh, Basel a year ago. What kind of chap is he? Oh, he's a very good kid. Uh, he loves to play, loves to compete. It was a lot of fun to play with him. We were up match point in the finals, but uh, a guy by the name of Patrick McEnroe came up with a too good a shot to beat us. Who was his part partner? Oh! partner was actually uh, Jacob Lassick, who won the doubles here yesterday.
on the basis of this point, as we see Pedder coming in on a good deep approach, a great lunge volley for a put away. Looks like he's lost his butterflies. Counts up. Currier is one of the quickest guys in the game, but he didn't do enough with that shot. Good stab save. Straight down the middle approach. Do you approve of that against Courier, John? I think that would be a good uh, tactic to try, to cut off the angles. It'll be interesting to follow the French spectators here this afternoon. They have no close rooting interest. Their man, Henri Leconte, eliminated by Corda in the semifinals. So as the match develops, uh, I'm sure they'll sway one way and then decide, as they did yesterday, as they pulled for Steffi Graf against Monica Sellis. on Courier, and Courier shot wide for 30 all. It looked like a backhand approach a la Rod Laver in his prime. Beautiful stroke there. How Kept it yourself? real low. Actually, I believe Corda hits the ball more similarly to Laver than Laver. he does to my backhand. And, I, and I, I understand that Rod has said the same thing. Oh. Excellent return of service, and... Petter Corda has the first to break of the match. Comes from a tennis family. His father was nationally ranked in Czechoslovakia. Same name, Petter, and his uncle Pavel Corda is the national coach. Is Petter hitting a four in turn? Perhaps trying to go for a little too much on this backhand pass, and I think he knows it. Started playing tennis at two years old. 12 and under champion of Czechoslovakia, and his reward was to be allowed to play three hours a week indoors. Hmm. He was a ball boy during the Davis Cup competition for Yvonne Lendl, and that also a high honor that only goes in Davis Cup to the very best in Czechoslovakia. Might be a lesson to be learned for those youngsters that are 10, 12 years old playing four to six hours a day. Ball boys, ball girls, rewarded uh, throughout uh, these two weeks by a standing room only seat at center court for the finals today. And in the first round, there was Gordon Forbes, who wrote the best book ever done on tennis, a handful of summers. Game to Jim Courier, 2-1 on serve, opening set. Courier. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. Ask them about quality. It's one of the biggest reasons five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. The F-Series pickup, Taurus, Explorer, Escort, and Ranger. Five out of ten of the country's best sellers. It's quality that breeds success. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer. Can a razor cut your beard off below the skin without the blades even touching your face? It can if it's a Norelco. Norelco's patented lift and cut system lifts the hair, so when it's cut, it can actually drop below skin level without the blades even touching your face. Are you getting a shave this incredibly close and exceptionally comfortable? You are when you shave with Norelco. Norelco, we make close comfortable. Petter Corda picking up uh, his game in that courier service opportunity and uh, stretch the champion a bit before Courier holds it's 2-1. Corda losing four sets, Courier but one. Played longer matches did Corda, so those numbers skewed a bit. Average time of the match uh, between 2-11 and two and a half hours. 
The difference in this match could very well be how many free points each other wins on their serve. Jim Curry has a much bigger serve. Corda more or less just gets the ball in. And has a, hot, a surprisingly high amount of double faults per match, considering how, how he really doesn't go for that much. It's very rare in a tennis player when you can see someone take a shot like this and do that much with this with that shot. So effortless. His backhand, so deceptive, too. Here's Petra Quarter's serve. Doesn't come in on the serve. Excellent drop shot to win this point. What people don't realize, I think, when they look at him, is he's six foot three inches tall. Rod Laver being five seven. Courier is six one. A couple inches shorter. But stock here at 175. Perhaps heavier. Looks like a baseball player, and that's what he almost became. Wait, wait. Shakora. At love, Porta holds two all. A reminder to be with us on NBC Sports tonight. We present game three of the NBA the Finals. The league's top two winning teams, the Bulls and the Blazers. Michael Jordan will hear Blazer Mania tonight at the Memorial Coliseum. Those fans will be making lots of noise for Clyde Drexler and the beloved Trail Blazers. Fifteen years ago, Portland won the NBA title. They're even at one all. Tonight at 7 live Eastern. Uh oh. Painted the corner to Corda. What Corda's doing so well at this point is keeping the ball Zero real guns. low and really picking the right time to attack. That's just a beautiful approach out up the line. Well, I hope the grand slammer Don Budge and his wife Lori are watching, and this kid Corda will remind Budge of a guy he played in the grand slam year, Yaroslav Drobny, the Czech who won here in 50 and 51. Just one. Rodney didn't look like he was doing much out there, but suddenly zip, zing, angle. As I said earlier, despite the fact that he was drinking coffee with an inordinate amount of sugar in it, he seems to be very relaxed and uh, perfectly comfortable at this point, considering it's his first time, as I said, past the third round in a major. to me like one of his strategies is try to employ this backhand cross-court approach shot to mix Courier up and so far he's been quite successful with it. Gans Look at this beautiful stroke. Inches from both lines, covering the net well and great touch on the volley. And wisely staying there at home because even though the crowd didn't think Courier would get to the ball, he did. 15-30. Well, John, you compared him a couple of days ago, Corda, to the shot-making style of Henri Lacan, and at times that free-flowing backhand does remind you of the Frenchman. I think both of them, as youngsters, try to emulate the man I've been mentioning, Rod Laver, who's the only man ever to win two Grand Slams, which is unheard of. 1962-1969. I myself being a third to try to copy his game. At both lines. Ooh. Oh. oh! Deceptive quickness of Jim Courier. We just missed it hitting both lines. 
He hits a great Gallant drop shot here. And look at this shot here from Jim Courier. He's quite an athlete. This redhead from Dade City, Florida, Citrus Country. Big Cincinnati Reds fan. Reds root for him when he plays in the Queen City. I think I think people should stop talking about the fact that he does he doesn't have that much ability and he he wins on his hard work because he's got an awful Check lot of ability. Away. Courier holds a couple of great points in that game, forced by Corda. Courier men par trois jeux à deux. on rust. I hate rust. Iron Mike on tough. This is tough. Rust tough. This is rust. Holium? The dictionary defines tough as strong. Not easily influenced. Like me. The definition of oleum is... Ah! We sprayed this rusty metal plate with fast-drying rust tough. Exposed the rusted metal, then placed it in the torture salt fog chamber. The rust didn't spread. It stayed tough. You want tough? What do you want? Oleum. Got rust? Get tough. Rust tough. Coach of Corda, Vladimir Zednik. He won a couple of uh, titles on the tour in the 70s. Big Stick Zednik, they call him. Boy, could he hit that serve. Singing Zeddy. My God, he'd knock you right out of the joint, and that was with a wooden racket. The fire chief of the tour in those days. Petit silence. Two, three, opening set. Corda's service motion, as we uh, watch it here, seems somewhat yeah, limited. Uh, must have had some problems with that shoulder. It's not as free as uh, Courier's. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, a couple years ago, he had some shoulder problems and couldn't pick up a racket for a couple months. Got himself caught in the center of the court. When you look at Petter Corda's serve, it's more or less, uh, he cocks it back more than you'd see normally on a left-handed server. But it really is more of a serve that just gets the ball in play. Rarely will you see him come in behind this. First serve and volley effort. It always happens on TV. Never <laughs> serves and volleys. Next point serves and volleys. He's going to mix that up, I think. He's been punished on his second serve in the tournament, winning uh, well below 50% of his points on the second serve. That's what Courier hopes he can get. See, 43% of his points won off the second serve, high over 70% on his first serve. So Courier's hoping. And he's off on that uh, first serve percentage today. The ball. And the Come first on. break point for Jim Courier. Corda had one in the third game of the match, couldn't convert. What he's got to guard against is the unforced errors. And Jim's going to give him all day to allow him to go for maybe a little bit more than he should. Big serve. The beauty of his big serve, big. serve, though, Dick, is that he normally doesn't hit it that hard, but every now and then he can pop a big one, as you saw there, and that had a lot of pace on it. Especially down the middle.
avantage pour là. Another thing that Petter Quarter does real well is handle the high ball extremely well. Hits a good serve out wide. Does a lot with that volley. Very good up high on both sides. Point from three all. Down oh, the middle sorry. again for the ace, his second. Three all. Trois jeux par so each man with a break opportunity, neither converting. There's Team Courier. Brad Stein on the left, Jose Igueras on the right. Igueras, who uh, has done a good job with Americans in Paris. Well, he has. He coached Michael Chang to the title in 1989 and Jim Courier last year. And he and Stein cooperate very well. A fellow named Sergio Cruz was very important in the formative days at the Bulletieri camp and a little later for Courier. Double fault just as a sound went off that might have disturbed the career, but no let uh, called by the chair umpire. I think Jim Courier may be a bit surprised at how well Petter Quarter is matching him from the backcourt. Uh, before the match, talking with uh, Brad and Jose, they felt like, hey, Jim Courier is the number one player in the world. He's got a lot of confidence. He's going to play the way he wants to play, and he's going to force Quarter to play his style. But at the moment, Quarter seems very comfortable playing this way. Ace for Courier. Appeared to hit both lines. His first. Big time to come up with that serve at low 30. When you're referring to Don Budge, he always said that uh, the most important game in each set was the seventh game. Do you believe that? I believe it's an extremely important game, and I would, certainly wouldn't go against my old pal Don. Caught the line. Ooh. Soccer players. They love soccer in Europe. Hopefully, they'll love it in '94 in the United States when we have the World Cup for the first time. Yeah, the U.S. team certainly distinguishing itself, both the veterans and the Olympic team. Miss hit and Courier from Love 30. Game point. Don Budge, the first to win all four major titles in 1938. And he met a Czechoslovakian in the finals here in Paris for the French title, uh, Roderick Menzel. He, like Corda, was his first Grand Slam final. Jim Courier playing a good aggressive point. Thinks he has the point one, but Corder hit a great forehand pass. I think it caught Jim slightly by surprise that he hit that good a shot off. Vous plaît, that good messieurs. an approach. Vous plaît, merci. Opening set, three all deuce. His dad, Petter Sr., coached him till he was 18. Courier coached by a grandmother in his early years.
Joseph Goyo. Another. Courier's game 4-3 will return to Paris after these messages and a word from your local state. Is this man really Ivan the Terrible? He is not. He never was. And he never could have been. It is animal Ivan. An all-new Dateline NBC, Tuesday. Summer in Vail, Colorado. Leave the heat and humidity of the city behind and discover cool, sunny days in the majestic Colorado Rockies. Relax and enjoy golf. Browsing through our European-style village. A host of Rocky Mountain activities. Three-night summer vacation packages at Vail start at just $88 per person. For Vail information and reservations, call 1-800-525-2257. You want to lease a Mercedes, but you don't want a long commitment. You could get a shorter term, but the payments might be too high. Introducing the win-win lease. Short term, less cost. It's like getting a big promotion and hiring your own secretary. The Mercedes win-win lease. Today's tennis match sponsored locally by Mercedes-Benz. Very competitive to this stage in the first set. And now on serve, Corda to Courier. began wearing that white ball cap uh, last year here at the French. It served him well, and it's become part of his costume, his trademark. Let's go to Chris Everett, who is in the player's box. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. I asked Jose Higueras if there's anything in Jim's game that he go. should change, and he said yes, the return of serve. He's not happy with Jim's return of serve. He needs to return deeper and higher to prevent Corder from coming into the net. So let's see if he can do that. All right. Thanks, champ. Uh, visiting with uh, Chris as she uh, picks up the odds and ends. And suddenly a, a nice odd and end for Courier. Misplay Valley Corda and Jim Courier with three chances to jump into a 5-3 lead. Five minutes ago it was 3-all love 30. Now it's 3-4 love 40. So this turnaround is not uh, what Petra Corda had in mind. And first serve a bit off. Game to Courier. He leads 5-3 and now will serve for the set. It just shows you how important that first serve can be because Jim Courier hit that big ace at Love 30 and I think it put, a, put something in Corda's mind, made him think twice. And now all of a sudden Jim Courier is serving to win the first set. Really putting the pressure on Petter now. Courier is a usual faultless style, very few errors. Ooh. Caught the center line for his second ace. Counts. Full of composure, Courier, but he's not always been that way, as uh, he's told us. He's been no angel, but tried to control his emotions, and he feels he's better now than ever.
Do you suppose up? just once in my life I might hit a backhand like that? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep trying. I think it's trying. still possible. It's still possible. What I liked about that point, though, is I felt like Quarter went back to the slice backhand, which he seems to be much more comfortable with at this point. He worked a point, and because of that, he 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 he, he was able to hit a great pass because he had built up his confidence during the point. Gee. Is there an echo in here? Backhand, backhand winners. Here's another example of that. This is a great backhand pass cross court. I think it was set up by the fact that he hit a couple of great slices. He had built up his confidence. He felt more comfortable again. In tennis, you can get your confidence and lose it all within a matter of points. At three all, love 30, he seemed extremely uncomfortable. Uncom then he, at five three, looked very uncomfortable. Now he's comfortable again. chances to get that break back. 13th stroke, longest rally. Seems like he's a different player than he was a couple of points ago. Look at that forehand winner and look at the reaction here. He has the French crowd starting to pull for him. And now two opportunities to deny Courier this opening set. One goal. He has the ability to let the crowd befriend him. He started in Rome that way when he was behind Alberto Macini a set and 5-1 in the second and came roaring back and he kept leading cheers for himself and it kept up throughout the tournament. And he was a big favorite. You have to like the way he plays tennis. Oh, it's really yes. a joy to watch. On the center line, another. Not, well, no, 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 late no. call, just wide. Center linesman, Francoise Wogo, called out. breaks back there on serve in the opening set. This is the French Open presented by Diet Coke. If you think you have only two choices for business computer systems, Think again. Hewlett Packard. When you've got a tough case of athlete's foot, the itching, the cracking, the burning, you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin Tenactin. Clinically proven Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. Get Tough Actin Tenactin. Petter Korda facing the champion Jim Courier. Courier serving for the set. He breaks back. And this crowd now has adopted the 24-year-old Czech. We're live from Paris. Approaching 4 o'clock in the afternoon. One of the warmest, if not the warmest, day of the entire two weeks. It's now up into the 80s.
Great Gans backhand cross court. Sees the opening and then hits a little beautiful touch drop shot there. What's great is how, how the crowd has gotten so into it. It's really picked up Corda. Well, they were for you in that opening round match against Nick Coulty. The crowd is great in the French Open. There's no question about it. Uh, Merci. What I liked about what Corda did, though, unlike Andre Agassi, for example, in the semifinals, is that he pumped himself up after a couple big shots. And because of, the, of that, the crowd really responded. Andre appeared unusually subdued throughout the match, and I think that cost him. Yeah, they were ready to really cheer for him, but he didn't give them many opportunities to explode. 30-15. Another ace for Corda, his third. All three have been down the middle. Corda going down the paint. You'll see plenty of that tonight. NBA Finals Game 3, Portland, Chicago. 7 o'clock this evening on NBC. Game to Corda, Courier serves at 5-all. Czechoslovakia has a marvelous tennis tradition and have produced an unusual number of good players for such a small country. Actually, they had their first national championship two years before the United States in 1879. Two years after the first Wimbledon, where we'll shortly be. Considering they have about 15 million people in the country, they've had incredible success there. Yeah, cool. those shots from Corda. I think Corda must have hit five great shots in this point and still lost it. You have to give credit to Jim Curry there. But as tough a draw as Jim has had, John, he hasn't played anybody with this kind of finesse or change up in spins and speeds. He definitely doesn't look as comfortable as he did in the earlier matches. That may be because it's the finals as well. As, as anyone around Talented. tennis knows, Cordes is without a doubt one of the most, if not the most talented player in tennis right now. Oh, that you really mean that? One of the most talented, one of the if, most not talented the? if not the? And I'm including Jim Curry in that, though. He's got an awful lot of talent. Patrick Corder is right up there with the best of them. If he is that talented, why hasn't he won more often than he's 24? Let me tell you after this point. Second double fault. The first opportunity Dick he had to leave Czechoslovakia was I I don't I believe he was 19 years old. He wasn't really allowed out of the country before then. Uh, I think that's a big factor in why he's a bit of a late bloomer. He did have a shoulder injury injury that we referred to earlier. And he talked about that satellite circuit, which I, I mentioned earlier, where he lost 10 pounds because he was only allowed to eat one meal a day, and that might have him a bit as well. He only weighs about 160 pounds, and he's six foot three, so can you imagine him 10, 10 mm. pounds less? Just long. As Courier yeah, yeah, heard yeah. the patter of Petter's feet on that one coming to the net. Well, Brad Gilbert will tell you about this guy. Corda destroyed him in a Davis Cup match in Prague in 1990. 
Fortunately, Aaron Krikstein came through for the United States to beat Czechoslovakia. James the Courier, he leads 6-5, opening set for the 1992 French Open Championship. Grandfather, I was wondering, are you rich? Huh? I don't know if I'm rich. I have more money than I ever thought I would have, that's for sure. Then why don't you have a car? A car? I don't need a car. Besides, I'd rather take walks with nice people like you. Where did you get all your money? Oh, I've worked a long time and invested it. What's that? An investment? Yeah. Well, it's sort of like buying a green peach. A green peach? That's right. You set it up on your windowsill, and one day you have a plump, juicy peach. And everybody wants to eat it. But it's your peach. And that's sort of what an investment is. Grandfather. Ask your financial advisor about Nuveen tax-free investments, or simply call this number. And there from Paris, France, is the Davis Cup. Now in French property, and you were in Lyon as they won it, bud. One of the great occasions of my life in covering tennis, the way Leconte and Forget won the cup over the United States, and they lost it back right away. It's here until it's presented in November, but they lost to Switzerland. Switzerland's in the semis. U.S. is in the semis against Sweden, and it looks like the winner of that one will play Switzerland, probably. Courier driving Korda off the net with that lob. The cup will be 92 years old in August the if you want counts. to send a card. Well, obviously it meant a lot to the French, considering it was the first time in 59 years they had won the Davis Cup, but we're going to have to send that Federal Express back to the United States this year, I think, right, at, right after the match in November. Love 30, that places Courier two points from the set. Well, I've talked to my French friends here in Paris this week, and they all had the same answer. They cried when it happened. It was a... Big, big moment for the fans of this terrific country. It was marvelous. Oh, goodness, Pat. He's averaged seven double faults per match in this championship. That's his second, and it presents three set points to Courier. Well, this is what Petter Quarter has a history of, very up and down playing. He's played some unbelievable tennis this set, and yet there's been a couple other games where he's played some very loose points. He's played three loose points already this game. Ooh. It walked over the net. Curry broke the string. <laughs> He's been looking for help throughout the two weeks. He got and a little there. Gun. This is not exactly what he had in mind, but I'm sure he'll take it. Is that a net quarter? <laughs> yeah. Bravo. So, one career set point gone. Two more chances for the American champion. Jim Courier, the opening set, 7-5. It took nearly 50 minutes. We're live from Roland Steros Garros Setter Court, named after a World War I French flying ace, Dick Henberg, with John McEnroe, Bud Collins, and Chris Ebert. We're pleased you're with us after four o'clock Paris time. It's really hard to explain that last game other than maybe he just felt the pressure at that time. Stop. 
zéro gain. Now, when you won the opening set of a match, any special thoughts as you prepare to start the second, especially on Sergei Courier? I mean, there's a tendency sometimes to relax a bit. It certainly is, and that's an example where Jim Courier has improved so drastically. He plays every point so well, and he wants to get up ahead in this set. He won this first game. He's just thinking of this point right now. Off the net cord to love 30. Let's take a look at the numbers in the first set, John, and see if anything jumps out at you. Well, there's this huge differential in the winners. Corda's got 16 to 5 for Courier, but the unforced errors, Corda 21 and Courier 8, that's really the difference in the match right now. So Courier minus 3, Corda minus 5, the composite, composite of those two uh, statistics. Much more animated than the last Czechoslovakian champion, Petr Korda, Ivan Lendl. You know lefties are usually more anim animated. <laughs> you got Henri Lacan, John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors, so now Petr Korda. Apoplectic. <laughs> um, tell me what that means. <laughs> you don't want to know. Before I comment. <laughs> Tonto. 30 all. Tronto. Certainly big, be a big boost for Corda if he could sneak out a break this game. What I sense here is a bit of loss of concentration on Corda's part, though. From 5-3 to 5-6, 5-3 down to 5 to 6-5 down, he played three great, solid games, and now he seems to have lost his rhythm here. Jim Courier, a big serve to hold, opening the second set. Courier 7-5 in the first. This is the French Open on NBC, presented by Diet Coke. There's just one, and there's no mistake in it. Hello, Joe. What do you know? Let's sample a bottle. I'll make it two. One for you and one for me. Now is it warm? Diet Coke. If you can dream it, the rebel can do it. EOS Rebel from Cannon. For power over time. Space and light to create images, not just snapshots. Image is everything. Eos Rebel and Rebel S from Canon, so advanced it's simple. Many sights in Paris, but for tennis fans, take a good look at this one. Oh boy. Jean Barotra on the right in the pinstripe suit, always dapper. He will be 94 in August on the left, wearing the familiar crocodile emblem that he put on, the first guy to put reptiles on sports shirts, Rene Lacoste. Two of the famed four musketeers of France, the great stars of the 20s and 30s that took on America in the Davis Cup, Bill Tilden, four against one. Another loose forehand from Cordo. They're the reason this place was built. This is the house the Musketeers built. The other two, Cochet and Brugnon, dead. They won the Davis Cup for the United States in 1927, and they didn't have any place to play the final the next year, so they built this wonderful stadium. And then it became the scene of the French championships as well. This 
this, I think, is a very important game for Florida. He's got to reestablish himself. Counts out. Really, John McEnroe seemed uh, much more tentative in his shot making, not really letting it fly the last couple of games. That and the fact that I, I, I see that Jim Courier's depth on his ground strokes has really improved. On his return and off the ground, he's hitting with a lot more depth and closer to the line. Long, uh, Chris Everett's been chatting with the Petter Corda. Well, I just talked to Vladimir Zednik, who's Petter's coach, and Vladimir says Come Jim on. has the advantage because he's been in this Grand Slam situation before. They're both a little bit nervous. The difference in the first set was Petter made too many errors. What he'd like Petter to do is make a few more drop shots because he won a few crucial points off that drop shot in the first set. Thank you, Chris. There it is. Not good enough. <laughs> well, despite the fact that he lost this point, I still think it's a good play because what it does is at least me makes Jim Courier think a little bit. Great reflex there by Jim. But it looks like Jim's starting to find his rhythm and, and his groove, and he needs to keep him away from feeling too confident. I think the drop shot, since Corda hits it so well, is a good play. Oh, beautiful. And with that, a break point for Courier. Courier, uh, a good doubles player. He doesn't play a lot on the tour, but he won his first uh, French title here as a junior with Jonathan Stark five years ago. Mm. An ace to wipe away the breaker. Four now for Corda. Knowing Jim Courier, if he chose to be, he could probably be a great doubles player. He's going to play the Olympics uh, in doubles, is he not? He's playing the Olympics in doubles with Pete Sampras, and uh, he may very well be playing the Davis Cup doubles as well with yours truly. Would you like that? I'd love it. Are you kidding? It's not a bad partner, huh? Oh, it just curled wide. Avantage pour that. Now that's an example of a very good time to surprise Jim with a uh, second serve, serve and volley tactic. Court is not given credit for how smart he plays. Sometimes you look at his game and you think he's a total hit miss player, but I think there's a lot of thought behind what he does. even close. Maybe he was thinking too much there. Third double fall. This is where he needs to take a step back and not allow himself to make another easy unforced error against number one player in the world. Hmm. Well, you can see what Agaris was saying that he doesn't feel Jim is returning as well as he can. Rhythmic support for Petter Korda from this French audience. Well, the court is playing quite a bit differently than it was even a couple days ago, so that may be throwing them off a bit. It seems to be a lot hotter, the weather is hotter, and the ball's bouncing up higher because of that. Now the longest game of the match, third deuce. What I like about this is it's like two fighters going at each other. Just when you thought that Courier was getting into a bit of a baseline play, he comes in, changes himself, and gets rewarded because of it. Second. Break point for Courier, already up a set. I get the feeling that the momentum's really starting to swing in Jim Courier's favor, and I think the crowd's sensing it as well, trying to spur Corder on. Fier, 
Villeneuve. Villeneuve, yeah. Andre. Fortescue is the net judge. Are you making up these names, Bud, or are these real names? <laughs> <laughs> Another ace. Down the center. Five for Corda. Big one. As Courier sitting on that set point. He get it. Now watch what he does so well on this backhand. He waits, 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 sees Corda move just slightly to his right and goes back. Watch him wait here. Just that little split second extra, see him move and go the other way. At baseball, backhanded stroke of Jim Courier. <laughs> That better Corda fighting off three break points. He get it. How do you get your hair like that, I wonder? How do you just get hair? Oh! Like that. I'd be happy if I had hair at all like that. That's true. <laughs> Shut up, bud. I'm not impressed. So four breakers for Courier. Four double folds for Corda. I tried putting my finger in a socket a couple times, but that didn't work. They call him Woodstock. Jim Courier's mistake here is he hit a couple of great shots, but we didn't see it on this replay, but a few shots before that, he, 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 he didn't come in at an opportunity where he could have come in and put the pressure on him. And because of that, Corda just hit a fantastic backhand winner. He gave Corda that one last chance, and Corda really responded. That may have cost Steffi Graf the match yesterday against Monica Sellis, the same thing. I think it did. Long. Courier following it off into the crowd. Point number five. Four. He kept his composure so beautifully on those backhands, but he just went for a little too much on that forehand. I don't think he needed to go for that much. Well, it's been a tormenting service game for Corda. Courier keeps the pressure on. <laughs> Meanwhile, if he should bail himself out of this game, stay even in the second set, Courier will have the weight of uh, not converting all those break points, even though he's up 7-5, a first set win. It's unusual for Jim, who usually seizes you when he's got an opportunity. Oh. Hmm. Second serve. I think Corder may be surprising him just a little bit with the serve. He's mixing it up quite well, and uh, I also think Jim is thinking a little bit about a few points ago when he had that opportunity to go up a break. Finally, a game point for Corda. Oh, my! A 
big game in this championship match for Petter Korda. I think the most important thing here is look at his reaction after he hits this great forehand winner. He's really trying to get the crowd into it. Watch here. Hits a great forehand winner down the line. He's trying to get the crowd up on his feet to get behind him. A 20-point game. If he continues to hit forehands like that, believe me, the crowd will be on his feet. Five chances to break for Courier. Hmm. Another big forehand. Serve and volley by Jim Courier. Here's Jim attacking. Didn't do quite enough of that approach, and Corda hits another great one right up the line, just inside the line, on the run. The other one we just saw was he was standing and waiting for the ball. This one on the run hit it equally as well. Courier loves that serve up the middle. Doesn't like that ball. We've had some flatten during the tournament. Double fault for Curry on his third. Jeopardy in his service game. Five break points against him. Surviving, and now he has three chances to take the lead here in the second set. How often do you see that, though, when you get out of a, a game where you have down four or five break points and you come right back and it, the burst of comments you get and you come back and here it is, love 40, three chances to break. It always seems that way, doesn't it? On Ooh. the line. It also happens all the time when you get the break point, you may go for just a little bit too much, and that's what's just happened on that point. He had all the confidence. He didn't need to go for quite that much on that shot. But he was so excited, he, he couldn't help himself. Mm. And the ace by Courier. Two breakers knocked away. His third ace. Tom to if I was quarter right now, I'd cover that serve up the middle. Jim loves that serve up the middle. Make him go where he's just slightly more uncomfortable. Or start praying to the gods for a double fall. <laughs> Never works for me. I've seen you double fall a lot. No, I'm all for you. Ah. Fans feeling Courier's taking too much time. Hear the derisive whistles from the crowd. They whistle better in Paris than anywhere else. On the line. No nope. fault. No, no, Bruno Rebu. There was no call. Rebu, the chair umpire, then ruling fault. Yeah, there was no call from the service lines, but Bruno immediately called it. Second set. Courier took the first. 7 5. Making a sports car, it seems mandatory to mention how fast it can go. All right. With an overhead cam engine capable of producing 228 pounds of torque, 
The new Subaru SVX can reach speeds in excess of 140 miles per hour. But how important is that? Most of the time you're in traffic, and anyway, it's stupid and dangerous and a waste of precious fossil fuels to drive like that. Instead, why not mention the things you shouldn't mention about a sports car? A strong weld, an anti-lock braking system, the ability to carry four adults, all-wheel drive, engineering that endures. Still, if it's speed you want, we promise you'll easily be able to go as fast as the law allows. Subaru. What to drive. You're here. She has the traveler's checks here. Nah, that's no good. But this is new American Express traveler's checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Better Corda's fiance, we understand? Yeah, Regina Rektova. Remember her at Hilton Head? Yes. She was on the women's tour. She got as high as number 39 in the world, and she's wearing the engagement ring. And pleased, uh, Petr Korda, after fighting through his last service game, survives and then breaks Courier to take the lead here in the second set, 2-1. Well, I think what's interesting here is here's Jim Courier trying to attack. And I think the reason he did that is because he feels like the match is being taken to him, very unlike the other matches he's played so far. Kurt, uh, Korda, excuse me, seems to be dictating play at this time, which is very unusual for opponents of Jim Courier. John, your first major final, 1979, Kansas. against Vitas Gerolitis, U.S. Open. How long does this first major final uh, patch of nerves last? Well, Were you I was, nervous at first? It was very unusual, because Vitas, Vitas Gerolitis and I grew up together, so we really knew each other. We grew up 15 minutes from that, so it didn't have quite the same feeling as maybe it did for Corda. It does for Corda now. Certainly, we were both extremely nervous, but I was fortunate. I had a great day and felt comfortable from the beginning. Jim Courier reestablishing with that forehand, 15-30. John, do you recall as many hitters of fine inside-out forehands as we have today in the game? No, not, not anywhere near what the amount we have now. It, it started in the mid-80s. Uh, if you remember a guy by the name of Jose Luis Clare, he used to do it extremely oh, yeah, well on yeah. clay. He was one of the first ones that we really saw do that, but there's dozens of them now to play that style. Oh, way off on that double fold is fifth. And two chances for Courier to pull even in the second. Is it the equipment? I think it's the equipment, the fact that the tennis players are working harder off the court. And I also think it's the natural evolution of sports. Players are getting bigger and stronger. They're using lighter balls. The court's bouncing higher. So it, you need that inside out for in the high forehand and backhand as a weapon, or else you'll, you just won't be able to last on the tour now. Game to Courier on a couple of double faults from Corda, but that's been his pattern, as uh, we indicated much earlier. He's a high and a low performer, and he has had his share of double faults throughout the tournament, averaging about seven per match. Six already today, and it's two all. Well, despite the fact that Jim Courier lost that first point, I think he put something in Corda's mind. And look at the way Corda reacted the rest of the game. Calls on fire, Bruno Rabu, meaning a second bounce. Here's another example of what Chrissy Everett talked about earlier. Vladimir Zegin telling Chrissy to use the drop shot more, and it's very, very uh, good play at that particular time. He sees a courier standing way back behind the baseline, and, and it would be a great idea for him to employ the strategy since he hits it so well. I tried it in my first round match, but I kept missing it. Still got to the final, John. 
Another beautiful touch shot from Courier. Bad judgment. He hits a great inside out for him as he comes in. A good deep volley. But here's that lob you were talking about, Dick. Beautiful touch on that lob. Now, what? Does he want another racket, Corda? Tighten the strings or align them. One of those little... These are called stringerlings or Duralift, and they're, they're little things you put in the strings to make them last a little bit longer. Petra told me before the match that he only uses one racket in his singles matches the whole tournament. Hmm. Incredible. A normal player may use six, five, six rackets in one match. In one what? match. Corda has used the same racket the whole tournament and says that he could probably get by oh, with uh, two or three the whole year. He uses one for practice, another one for the doubles match, and this is the one he likes. He says he's very superstitious. He loves this racket. This one racket. I don't even mean this brand of racket. This one racket. Sleeps with it. Four aces for Courier. A point from 3-2 in the second. He won the opening set 7-5. Corda with a great run here in the second set after fighting off five break points on his serve. And then he broke Courier only to find Courier getting that break back on a couple of double faults. And another ace. This is the French Open on NBC, presented by Diet Coke. did for travelers up here, Sheridan is doing for travelers down here. Introducing Sheridan Sure Savers, the revolutionary program that makes travel less expensive. Three simple rates from 5 to 50% off. The airlines got people traveling again. Now Sheridan makes sure they get a great night's sleep. We spend a billion so you'll feel like a million at Sheridan Hotels. Call us for Sheridan Sure Savers. To me, when a woman sweats, it just isn't sexy. Of course a guy's gonna sweat sometimes, but when you're close, who wants a guy that smells? Get closer with Arid Extra Extra Dry, the anti-odor antiperspirant. I trust Arid. There's a salute to the American men's French Open champions. It started in 25. Bill Tilden surprisingly didn't win here. No, he didn't, and I think they all might be watching. Frank Parker, 76, in Chicago. It's marvelous. He won it twice. Don McNeil is in Florida. Fudge Patty Fudge is Patty's here in, in Paris. The stands. He's lived in Paris since World War II. Tony Trabert is doing television back to Australia. Michael Chang is probably out hitting forehands. Courier, the seventh American to win here. It has not been a kind place. Remember, we first started these telecasts on NBC 10 yeah, events yeah. ago. 